Hello again, I'm Matthew from thewetpen.com. It's amazing how many pen and stationery stores there are within easy walking distance from Tokyo Station. In fact, in the lower shopping level of Tokyo Station itself, there's a traveler's notebook store that sells all kinds of wonderful stuff. It was all I could do to keep from stuffing everything into my backpack. I limited myself to just two things an exclusive Tokyo Station standard-sized refill, and this little passport-sized one, too. There was a little table where I could stamp my notebooks, so of course I did that. And right next door, there's a shop called Noya, which also sells some fountain pens and ink, but I didn't spend much time there. I had bigger fish to fry. Here's a map of the Tokyo Station area and Ginza, and these are some of the major pen stores within a 15 minute walking distance. After the Traveler's Notebook shop, I headed to the biggest Maro Zen. There are a few of them in the area. Sorry for the flickering lights. A common thing on this trip was that I was so excited about the shops and the inks that my camera work suffered. Anyway, they had the typical Japanese and European inks, and they had these Kuretake Ink Cafe inks also. But more importantly, Marazen has their own exclusive line of inks that are made by Sailor, but branded Athena. The ink color selection seemed to be pretty basic. Blue, black, blue, black, lemon. The gray and the brick red were a little more interesting, but I settled on the one called Eternal Blue. Several years ago, these Athena inks were sold in the popular Sailor vase bottles, but now that the vase bottles are disappearing, the ink comes in these. They look a bit like Parker Penman ink bottles. These labels are pretty classy, I think. There's a big M on the bottom of the bottle so that we can be sure that these bottles are made exclusively for Marazen. I also picked up a little bottle of Pilot Pigment Ink, which was new, and I'd never seen it in the US. But yes, it still broke my rule. Let's see what these look like. Again, I'm going to swatch this on a few of my favorite papers. This time, I'm going to replace the Cosmo Air Light with Aerofoil, which is pretty similar to Cosmo. It's a slightly warm-toned paper. Ah, this is a nice greenish blue. Sort of a dark aqua blue. It feels a little thick to me, too. It does stain the foam swab, so maybe the eternal part of this ink name is actually descriptive. When it's dry, there's a good amount of pinkish red sheen, especially on the Japanese papers. On the Irofull, it's a little more sharp and more mellow on the Midori. I like this more than I expected. I thought it might just be another dull document blue. I wonder if this is really waterproof or otherwise eternal in some way. I'll give it a little water test, I guess. Okay, so the surface ink definitely runs. And yeah, it all pretty much lifts away. So, Eternal is the name of the color, not a property of the ink. Pigment inks are often pretty dull looking when they're dry, unfortunately. So let's see how this Pilot Blue looks. It starts out pretty vibrant. And actually, on most of these papers, it stayed pretty vibrant. On the Rhodia, it did lose saturation as it dried, but on these other papers, it stayed nice and bright and picked up a good amount of magenta sheen too. Nice. This might be my new favorite blue pigment ink. Just to make sure, I'm gonna give this a water test too. And yes, this is a waterproof ink. 
In the same area of town, I visited the giant old Takashimaya department store stationery section, and Moriichi Kobayashi also, and they were both really nice, but didn't have any exclusive inks. Oh, I should also mention that I stopped in at the Tokyo Hands store, which is also right at Tokyo Station, and it has a nice big stationery section, but also no exclusive inks. I almost bought this Sailor's Sailor, but it broke my rules. My next stop down the block was the Ginza Itoya store. Itoya has several locations around Japan, but the one in Ginza is a step above the rest. It spans two buildings, but the main building has eight floors of stationery and an awesome selection of inks. The Itoya website says there are 18 floors total, which means that I didn't even find everything. I did buy a few notebooks. I had seen these fish notebooks earlier in Yokohama and couldn't help myself. Each one has a sushi recipe on the inside. And I almost bought one of these cool exclusive Lamy safaris with the copper clip, but I decided that I don't use my existing safaris enough to justify it. And there were tons of exclusive inks. The first ones that I found were not even on the floor that has all of the pens and ink. There was a pink tag stationery ink with a little mouse on the front, and these were exclusives from an ink exhibition called Ink Ink Ink. And they had other inks from the same show that carried the Ink 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 name on them, like this Katsura Leaf Green and these Kuratake Ink Cafe exclusives. When I made it up to the real ink floor, of course they had the usual European and Japanese inks, but also, Itoya's store brand of inks is called Romeo, and this cocktail ink was also an ink show exclusive, although I didn't know it at the time. And they also had these two Inku Numa inks. Inku Numa literally means ink swamp, which is what Japanese ink enthusiasts call the obsession with ink, the ink rabbit hole, so to speak. These names literally translate to this swamp and that swamp. There was a Kobe ink that I couldn't find. I assume it was sold out. And then there were these aging inks from Kawasaki Stationery. None of the colors grabbed me, so I think that I rolled them out pretty quickly, and they were more expensive than the others too. There were too many choices for me, so I ended up buying a Kuratake ink 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 color and my first ever tag stationery ink, and for the rest, I decided to give it some thought and go back later and pick up a few of the others. But somehow, I never made it back. So let me show you these two. But before I forget, let me remind all of you that if you're not subscribed to my channel, this is a good time to do it if you like this sort of thing. And don't forget that there's a like button down there too, if you do. So first, here's the Kuratake, which is called Nando Iro. Oh, this looks a lot more blue than I expected from looking at the box. As it dries down, it does turn out to be a little more turquoise, especially where it's lighter. The color is consistent across all four papers with just a little bit of reddish magenta sheen here and there. This reminds me of several inks that I already own, but it's a really beautiful one nonetheless. And this is the tag stationary Tokyo Mouse ink, which is called Red Mouse, I think. Okay, this color is a brownish burgundy. And it's taking its sweet time drying. But when it is dry, the color is uniform across all four of the papers, although there's a little bit of a lighter haze on the Eurofoil paper. No sheen to speak of, 
The color reminds me of a Birmingham Pen Company ink, and I could definitely see myself using this instead of a brown ink sometimes. It's a great color. Anyway, after Itoya, I eventually kept walking down the street until I got to the Ginza 6 building, where the Tsutaya bookstore takes up most of the top floor. It's a bookstore, but it also has an art gallery and sells some amazing photography portfolios and other works of art, along with lots of other stuff. Their ink selection isn't huge, but the quality is excellent. They had a couple of semi-exclusive Ferris Wheel Press inks. They are also sold online by Ferris Wheel, so I left them. They had four exclusive Sailor inks, but there was nothing really interesting about them. Boring packaging, unremarkable colors, so I didn't buy any of those. But they did also have three exclusive inks made by Tag Stationery. And they also had three exclusive Kakimori pigment inks. I didn't know at the time that the Kakimori inks were exclusives, but I did get this bottle. Here in the corner of the box, this says Ginza Tsutaya Bookstore. This group of inks is named after Japanese confections, and this particular color is called Fan Rakugan. And Rakugan are colored sweets that are made in different shaped molds, like flowers or butterflies or fans, like this. There was also another ink bottle that looked like a tag stationary ink, but it was less expensive than the others, and I couldn't find any information about it anywhere. So I added it to my list of inks to think about for later. I didn't end up getting it, so if any of you know what it was, uh, let me know in the comments. Anyway, let's see what this green one looks like. Aha, okay. This is a medium green not very saturated, and a little bit on the yellow side. Looks like it should give me some decent shading. The first swatch goes from a nice pale green to a very dark one, which is promising. On the Eurofull paper, the color leans a little more to the blue side, and on the Midori, of course, it looks a little more yellow. Speaking of Kakimori inks, I did visit the Kakimori shop in Tokyo. They had all of their standard inks, but no exclusives that I could find. Their custom ink bar was closed, I guess. They did have some really great notebooks and a nice variety of fountain pens and dip pens, but when I discovered that they were charging 3,300 yen for these beautiful aluminum bottle caps, and about 5,000 yen for the cherry wood ones, I decided I'd better run. Anyway, I want to mention one more spot in the Tokyo Station area before the end of this video. I didn't actually visit it on the same day as these others, but it fits in here. Right next to Tokyo Station, literally across the street from the Tokyo Station South Entrance, is the Kite building, which has a couple points of interest. The former postmaster's office, which has been converted into a letter writing room, which I think is a charming thing to have next to a train station, and a shop called Angers. Angers? I don't know. Kind of a general lifestyle store with a Scandinavian theme. Now, I'm not above skirting around anti-photography rules now and then, but in this case, I honestly didn't notice the no photography sign until after I was looking at these photos. Sorry. Anyway, this was the first place that I found in Japan that carried Noodler's inks, and they also carried a good variety of Taiwanese inks and some other European ones. I also found three exclusive Sailor inks. One of them a uh, night sky blue, one of them a berry color, and one of them that was some sort of a mushroom themed brown. For some reason though, buying a Nordic themed Japanese ink seemed out of place in my Japanese ink hunt, so I skipped it that day and didn't buy anything there. The next day, I would head out to finally locate Shosaikon, and I also found a couple more exclusive Sailor inks, so I'll pick up there in the next video, 
Again, if you want to follow along, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get notifications. And that's it. I'll see you next time.